Praise God. Are you happy to be alive, Yellow Vesters? Okay. It's good to be alive. It's good to come out and stand for what we believe in. Well, for the past few weeks, I have been bombarded by all kinds of different emails and texts about white privilege. White privilege. So today, I want to talk to you about white privilege. I hear this now everywhere. I've got emails and texts about how privileged I am because I am white. How am I privileged, I ask. It took me five years to come to this country. I had to go through the medical, paper after paper. We needed police check, criminal check, and every other check that was possible. When I emigrated here, I had to go to work, and the only one available for me, the white man, was construction job for six dollars per hour. I worked 10 hours a day to sponsor my wife, to be allowed to come here into this country. It took us almost two years to bring her here. We were not then and are not today privileged because of the color of our skin. We were just and still are just hardworking men. We're not lazy, sitting in the basements waiting for the welfare checks to arrive. I think you have mistaken us with the Muslims and other privileged people coming here illegally through our borders by the thousands. They do not need to fill the papers and go through the medicals, waiting for the proper legal way to come to our country. They do not need $6 jobs to sponsor their families. They receive thousands of taxpayers' money for them to spend as they please. They're taken to the hotels, are fed, supported, and sponsored by the government. And they are treated that way only because they have a different color of skin and different religion than ours. They are the privileged ones. Another group that I see being treated with privileges are the homosexuals and all the other alphabet letters sodomites. Everywhere I look, it is them that are receiving honors, government work, university positions, and I'm asking you, for what? Why? I think that's a valid and good question. Not for their accomplishments, they receive all those things. Not for hard work, dedication to Canada, but simply for having sex certain way with certain people and are willing to publicly manifest that sexual preferences. That's all. Then we have the natives. Oh, the holy cow of Canada. Always blaming the white men for their poor choices in life. They have land, government checks, houses built by government, incentives. They can hunt all year round. They can fish as much as they want. I say that in this country, they are privileged. They have so much privileges that the sky is the limit. But well, let's talk about government officials. They rob, they steal, they lie, and they cheat. They manipulate the law, and they get away with the murder. I say they are privileged. 
Let's talk about media. Media are privileged and paid by the crooks in a government to lie, manipulate, cook the news, to enslave the population. I say they are the privileged in this country because it looks like they can get away without consequences for any evil action that they do. They are the elite leading the privileged thieves in this pillage of our inheritance. If it comes to us, the white Christians, we are not privileged via the incentives of people. We are Christians and our incentives are coming from the one that created us, the very way we are. You see, God created me, white. And I am perfect, perfectly content with the way he created me. I'm not going to apologize to you or to anybody else that I am white. That's how God, my God, created me. God knows why he created me the way I am and what purpose he created me for. And I am happy and fulfilled as a white male. Why shouldn't I? God does not make mistakes. Sometimes, simply, we do not understand the why. Let's go to Psalm 139, verse 13. For you formed my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and I know this very well. God created me the very way he wanted me to be, white male, born on such a day with a purpose to give him glory and honor. Let's go to Genesis 1:26, And God said, let us make men, let us make men. In our image, you have been created in God's image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion. Let's go to Genesis 5, 2. He created them male and female. And he blessed them. Why he blessed them? Because that's how he created them. And he looked at them and he said, they're good. They're good. What he made was good. He named them men. Let's go to Job 33, 4. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Job 34, 19. Who shows no partiality to princes, no regards the rich above the poor. In other words, we all have been created equally. Equally. God created us equally. I don't care if you're red, black, yellow, or green from Mars. I do not care. God created you equally. He shows no partiality because you may be rich or poor. For they all are the work of his hands. Let's go to Psalm 100, verse 3. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us. It is he who has made us. And not we ourselves. God created you the very way you are. If God made you black, listen to me, black people. If God made you black, be happy about it. 
If God made you black, be happy about it. He made you for something great. To do good, not evil. To be a blessing, not a curse. To love, not to hate people. If he created you red, or yellow, or white, be happy. He created you to give glory to him for his amazing creation. If you want to achieve something great in your life, work hard, be honest, honor God and love people and His creation. Do good. Let's go to Romans 9.20. But who are you? A human being to talk back to God. Today, I had another homosexual activist attacking me, calling me a hate preacher and so on. I get that quite often. But I don't really care what the enemy has to say. I don't care what the devil has to say. I stand with God and by God's power. To stand for his truth, why? Because who is a man, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall, shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, Why did you make me this way or like this? If you have been created black, why would you say to the Creator, Why did you create me this way? When he created you red, why would you say to the Creator, why have you created me that way? If you're Asian or white, why would you turn to God and say, why have you created me this way? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay, same pottery for special purposes, and for some of common use. In other words, it's his choice how he made us and for what purpose he made us. And listen to me, people. There's so much going on right now with racial hate. And it's all done by design. It's all by design. The media are stirring this hate. The politicians are stirring this hate, and haters are stirring this for their own purposes because they want chaos to come. They want people to hate people. But that's not what God wants. God wants people to love people, to care for people, and He doesn't care about the color of your skin. We all are equal in His sight. All created to give Him glory and honor. Jesus died for souls. Not for the color of your skin. Let me, let me tell you this again. Jesus died for souls, not for the color of your skin. He died for all. Not just for the Jews, not just for the whites or blacks or reds, but for all. Let's go to Psalm 19, 119, verse 73. Your hands made me and fashioned me. This is, this is what God has done for you. He made you and he fashioned you the very way you are. Give me an understanding that I may learn your commandments. See, God commands me, God's commandments are very, very clear. Love, forgive, do good, bless, not curse. So let me ask you this question for all of you. 
They're coming to Black Lives Matter protests and doing all kinds of crazy things. Like somehow only Black Lives Matter. But in my Bible, with my God, all lives matter. All of them. The babies' lives that the black people are murdering by the millions. You know who is the number one murderer of black people? Black mothers. Black mothers. Look at the statistics. Look at the statistics. Millions of children are being murdered in abortion clinics by the black mothers. So here is my question to all those that are going out to the streets, protesting, looting, pillaging, murdering, smashing, hating. How is this going to reward you in the eyes of God? How is this kind of behavior going to bring justice to anyone you come in a name of justice but you give no justice to others you come in the name of equality and yet you're targeting other group of people including the white people How this kind of behavior going to bring justice to anyone? It will not. It will bring you shame and guilt. And in the end, it will bring you God's judgment. Let's go to Malachi 2.10. Do we not all have one father? In other words, have we not been created by the same God? In other words, we are a family. And we should stay a family. It doesn't matter of the color of your skin or your background. We all have been created by the same God, the creator of heavens and the earth. Has not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously against each other, against brother, so as to profane the covenant of our fathers, he writes? We all have been created by the same one true living God. In his image, we have been created. If you're black, you have been created in the image of God. If you're red, you have been created in the image of God. If you're yellow, you have been created in the image of God. If you're white, you have been created in the image of God. Let's not destroy that. Let's not allow them to bring racism into our hearts. Because that's what they want. They want chaos. Because out of chaos, their global order can come. You see, they have an agenda. Do not fall for it. They want chaos. They want looting. They want murdering. Because then they're going to bring their martial law and global agenda. Can't you see it? That they are using you. They're using you. You want to protest? By all means, go out there and protest. That's your God and state-given rights. But do it peacefully. Do it peacefully. Love and forgiveness should be stronger in your hearts than hate and bitterness. Hate towards another human being is going to bring you straight to hell. Hate towards another human being is going to bring you straight to hell. Do not go there. 
You see, hell was never created for man. It was created for the devil and his fallen angels. It was never created for man to go there. The truth is that God doesn't want you to go to hell. God wants you to have dominion on earth. You see, the Bible says that there is going to be new heaven and new earth. And God is restoring everything that has been stolen from Adam and Eve. And he wants you to have dominion over everything. In other words, we have been created in the image of God. And he is the king. And he wants you to be kings and priests here if you hate it will never bring you there if you have unforgiveness in your heart it will never bring you there it will always every single time bring you down so here is my solution if black lives matter so the white man's lives matter, the baby's lives matter, the red lives matter, the yellow lives matter, the young lives matter, the old lives matter. If you want to come and protest something, protest evil that is being done by every color of skin. I have seen evil done by the natives. I've seen evil done by the blacks. I've seen evil done by the whites and the yellows. If you don't believe me, go to the ghettos of America. I've been there. Go to China. Go to Arabic nations under Sharia law. You will see evil. Or go to the countries that are abusing their powers over people. And that, that kind of hate comes from every color of skin. Because you see, it's not about the color of your skin. It's about who you have in your heart. Do you have the devil ruling over you? Or you have God ruling over you? I pray that you will receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I'm telling you, from that moment on, you will not see people by the color of their skin. You will not see them by what they possess. But you will see them by what or who they have. Go to heaven. Do not go to hell. Because if there is a splinter of hate in your heart, you will be cast out from the kingdom of God. Be blessed and see you next time. My Savior, I shall not be moved. In His loving favor, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water, I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the
Gives me strength from day. 